Today on Made for the Outdoors. This could get messy. We're bending some branches at the largest canoe and kayak paddle manufacturer in the world. It's one sticky, dusty process. Anybody that starts this process new makes a lot of toothpicks. <laughs> and it's time to stitch and sew. A few outdoor clothing essentials. All Minnesota made. This is the Bee's Knees. People are passionate about outdoor equipment. Get this, Americans spend more than $20 billion a year on gear. But no one ever really sees how their stuff gets made. Well, that's where we come in. Each week, we throw open the factory doors and give you a behind the scenes look at how your favorite gear is made. Made for the outdoors. Welcome to Made for the Outdoors. So some silence and some self-powered travel are good for the soul. And whether you're canoeing or kayaking, you're probably not gonna get very far without one of these. Paddles have been around for so long, their specific origin is unknown. First documentation states that ancient paddles were primarily made of wood, and Native Americans introduced paddles to fur traders as a faster mode of transportation. Today there are hundreds of paddles to choose from, but the wooden paddle is the trailblazer that started it all. Well, the components are simple. When a canoe paddle is made, it is in-depth and high-tech. fun highlighting a big time product that has small town roots and here to tell us more about that is Jake Wissy. Hi. <laughs> so where are we today? We're here at Bending Branches Paddles in Osceola, Wisconsin, small town of Wisconsin and we are the largest, the world's largest manufacturer of canoe, kayak and stand-up paddleboard paddles. Well there are so many different products that are shipped out of here mm -hmm. but today we are focusing on the canoe wooden paddle. So what goes into this process? There's a lot of steps. Chop, glue, machine, sand, varnish graphics. So did you get all that? Don't worry, I didn't either. So let's now slow it down a bit and get the step-by-step -step process. Okay, not that slow. There, that's better. So the first step of the process is picking the lumber. Well, we use about four or five different kinds of lumber in each paddle. Basswood, maple, butternut, and alder. All of this lumber is locally harvested. Workers then hand pick each piece and cut it to size for both the blade and the shaft. So the variety of wood, is that just for looks or does it have a purpose? Both. We choose them for beauty, for color, and for look but we also use lightweight woods like basswood and butternut for the structure and to keep the paddle light on the inside. And we'll use harder woods like maple and alder on the outside for durability and edge protection. Where do we head next? Now we go to the radio frequency gluing station. Time to glue. This could get messy, so I hope that's okay. <laughs> Hopefully my hands aren't stuck together by the end of this. The first step in gluing okay. is I'm gonna give you this. Okay. You're gonna take that stick of wood and you're gonna run it lengthwise across the gluing wheel, just okay. like this. Now this has to be some high quality, like gorilla type glue, That is right? some really good glue. It's not anything that you can get at any uh, local stores. Okay. And then from there, it just sits down into the fixture, just like that. And then we repeat with the additional pieces of wood. So what happens in this process is the paddle goes into the RF gluer, and under heat and pressure, we actually cook the glue joints. This is extremely important. If this process does not go right, your paddle could fall apart. So this is a very important step for us. So this machine is pretty much a giant microwave. When the paddle comes out, it is well done. Not really how I like my steak, but definitely perfect for the paddle. 
what we also do is we start prepping the paddle for the rock guard, which is a really secretive process that we want to protect. The rock guard is so secret. Don't come any closer. Back. We can just show you a sneak peek. This is the signature tip on every Bending Branches paddle and is the brainchild of the company's CEO and founder, Dale Kicker. I got the bright idea of combining the Kevlar fiber into a plate material and incorporating it onto the canoe paddle. So there are three top secret ingredients in the rock art. They are and right? Come on, you really didn't think we were gonna tell you, right? Give me an example of the before and after. This massive sanding machine makes the blade skinny in about 30 seconds. And up next, we give the stock some shape and take our finish paddle up river. You're watching Made for the Outdoors. Made for the Outdoors is brought to you by Splash Products, Access Covers, and by Game Fair. Welcome back to Made for the Outdoors. Bending Branches uses locally harvested wood for their paddles. When they say local, they mean it. Come on in, Greg. You're kidding, right? We are kidding. We don't normally make our paddles out of random branches. Okay, so what's the next step of the process? The next step in the process is to take the paddle blank that you have in your hand, then we run it through our CNC router. And it comes out looking like what I have in my hand. Well, that's the best part is this is our passion. So it's not just work, it's also play for us. If you can do what you love, you won't work a whole day in your life, right? We've got bets going on whether or not you're gonna take a bunch of skin off when you're doing this sanding. Thanks a lot, no faith. You don't have to put much pressure on. Slow strokes all the way around. Now I need good advice because, you know, the guys over there, they think they've got a bet on this. So if you've got good manual dexterity, you will do just fine. Okay, so nice and easy. And then turn and flip as you're going around. There you go. It normally takes about three months to get good at this process. You might need six. We want the paddle to be nice and round and smooth with flowing lines. Practice makes perfect. Anybody that starts this process new makes a lot of toothpicks. <laughs> the tough end is you flip it around and you start working on the grip. Slowly roll it, slowly taper. You always want to keep it moving and rolling across the surfaces. Not too bad. Not for your first one. Can I take this toothpick home for a souvenir? You could take that toothpick home, absolutely. Hey guys, look, all my fingers. Yay! So my paddle needed a little TLC from the professionals. And then heads to graphics to get a name. Okay, so Lindsay, we're at the last step of the process. Okay. We basically are going to dip these paddles in varnish multiple times to seal the water out. You gotta get your green gloves. So the secret then is to grab it with this hand, keep this hand over. Yeah, we don't want to drip any of this on the ground, okay. 
Multiple dunks. Multiple dunks. Grab it. Keep this hand over. There you go. How long do I keep it in here? A little bit longer. Man, this stuff really, really smells. Imagine that. Yeah, take deep breaths. You start to feel better. All your problems <laughs> go away. That's good. And hang her up there. That's all there is to it. Hey, look at that. No varnish on me. Company-wide, we're capable of doing 1,200 paddles a day. That's not just wood, that's across the entire company. So we build everything to order. This is the paddle right here, the Espresso Plus that you made today, that you glued and sanded. From beginning to end, this beginning is it. beginning to end, yes. So that one's name is the Espresso Plus? Yep. So okay. say you're doing a very hardcore, long river expedition, I would go with something like the Expedition Plus. It's got rock art all the way up the side of the shaft, glass blade, it's got a T-grip for control. If you're just with the family out on the river, out on your local lake, and you want to use the loon, it's incredibly light, very functional. Well, I'm looking forward now to just getting one of these in the water. One of the best parts about working for a company that builds paddles is you get to take the afternoon off, grab a few team members, and go out on the river, um, do some research, and test out our product fully great benefit of working here. The ultimate reason for paddling and for being outside is taking in nature and taking in what we have to offer. So this summer we challenge you to get outside and seek some adventure. And also, don't forget the little things that propel those travels. Coming up next, a small town company is putting Minnesota on the map in the outdoor clothing industry. And we're heading there next on Made for the Outdoors. Welcome back to Made for the Outdoors. Let's now dive into the billion dollar outdoor clothing industry. So this is Alex, our intern, and he's sporting all of his favorite outdoor gear. Alex, I need your help. Can you take off all articles of clothing that aren't made in the USA? Whoa, 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 stop right there, Alex. We don't want you to be naked. That's because only 4% of outdoor apparel is actually made in the USA. So let's now find Alex some clothes that aren't only made for the outdoors, but also made in Minnesota. Clarkfield, Minnesota is small town USA. Population 900. But one of its largest employers ships their clothing worldwide. Clarkfield Outdoors stitched its first garment back in 1983. 32 years of business, and some of the first employees are still on staff. Welcome to Clarkfield Outdoors, where there are more sewing machines than there are employees, and there are more yards of fabric than there are people in Clarkfield, Minnesota. And I'm here now with Burdette Scoop. He's the owner of Clarkfield Outdoors. We make hunting apparel, work apparel, sports apparel, and anything that the sportsman is asking for. So we do bee suits for the bee industry, postal uniforms for the U.S. Post Office. We are international. A few years ago, we did an uh, entire battalion of maintenance coveralls for the Jordanian Army. We, this past week, we shipped to Australia and several times to Canada. We ship all over. Our work order today calls for a soft-shell jacket with camo accents and a pair of insulated bib overalls. Lindsay, all the patterns are labeled on the wall. So we're gonna do this off shell, so why don't you just find the pattern and okay. we'll get the jacket made. Insulated jacket. Oh, come on, Burdette, there are it, too can't many be, options. it cannot be that hard, Lindsay. There are too many options for that. Let's try this one here. 
Are you sure though? Soft shell, Soft shell jacket, jacket extra, large. extra large. All right. I guess it is easy. The dynamic duo, you two, right? The thing about this fabric is it has a membrane fused between the two shells. That allows it to be windproof, waterproof, but also breathable. And that is why it's such a popular jacket. Lay the pattern parts. What are we gonna do next? We've gotta make a marker. The marker is the pattern drawn on the fabric. Okay. It shows up well on material and we have to make all the marks, all the lines, so the sewers know exactly where to put the pocket. We make one of these and then we stack the garments. So we'll stack anywhere from 10 to say 100, 120 garments and then cut them all at the same time. You missed a spot. <laughs> wow, that thing is impressive. There you got the back of the jacket. All right, Lindsay, now we have to do the accent for the jacket. I like the falcon. Just so you know, I'm always looking for good cutters. Oh, you are? So I may have a job at the end of this? I don't go nearly as fast as you. I miss this spot. We got good sewers, they'll crack. Oh gosh, okay, good, that's good. <laughs> Follow us. Up next. It's time to sew. So we have one done. Followed by a mini fashion show with a camo catwalk. You're watching Made for the Outdoors. Made for the Outdoors is brought to you by Banks Outdoors and by Totem Resorts. Off to sewing? Off to sewing. Hi ladies, how we doing? Clarkfield Outdoors is busy producing their popular sportsman jacket. And these ladies go pedal to the metal all day. Wanda, we're gonna have you sew one jacket for us. And Lindsay, I'm leaving you in good hands with Wanda. <laughs> Perfect. Wanda is a little <laughs> like Wonder Woman. She takes the fabric and in about an hour, works her magic. It was a good thing I learned how to sew so I could make my own clothes. First up, the pockets. So I have my marks for my pocket and I made this to sew around. It gives me um, even pockets every time I do them. And those pockets definitely need zippers. Wanda loves to sew, so she sews and sews some more. Adding the Clarkfield logo and the Made in the USA trademark. Well, Wanda continues to work on the jacket. There's a lot going on in this room. Dolores is making these camo curtains. Sylvia is making pockets for a bee suit. And in here, Barb is making a jacket for trap shooting. 10 different garments, all being made in the same day. 32 years ago when I started, most of the apparel in United, worn in the United States was made here. That isn't the case anymore. In the year 2000, 2001, most companies went to Southeast Asia for cheap labor, cheap fabric. There's only 4% of the apparel worn in the United States that's made in the United States. We are part of that 4% and very proud of it. We produce over 500,000 garments a year. That's a lot of garments, a lot of jackets, a lot of bib overalls. And every one of those carries Clark Phil Outdoors label. Here is the completed jacket. Clarkfield Outdoor approval. This will sell. <laughs> Up next is the work bib, and we're going to talk to Erica about that process. Hi, Erica. Hi. <laughs> okay, so you're gonna walk us through this process, and where do we need to go for that to start? You gotta go right over here, okay. Maria and Irma. They like to work in pairs, okay. so one does the serving for it, and one does the finishing touches. Ready, set, let's make these bibs. This fabric is 100% duck cloth. It's built tough to withstand heavy duty work needs. These finished ones are going to General Motors. 
Some of them usually go to oil fields. I mean, I could see this being used for hunting, fishing, farm work. Snowmobiling. You know, snow, anything, Construction yeah. Construction in the winter. So let's now see how these fit. This is the jacket that we made today, but Clarkfield Outdoors makes hundreds of other garments. Hunting apparel, work apparel, sports apparel, and more. Clarkfield Outdoors is proud to be made in Minnesota and crafting your outdoor essential gear. Now that's why you love the outdoors. How cool is that? He's just chilling.